the wool on an alpaca will never break like a sheep. Um, you know, it'll never fall out, so it'll just keep growing. Um, I've had, I've done uh, wakaya alpacas with well over a foot of wool on them. The US is a little bit more um, uh, prissy, for a lack of a better word. Um, you know, the alpacas are worth a lot more money there. They're 100% tax deductible, so therefore we get a lot of rich clients getting into them to dodge tax. Uh, you know, for example, if they're selling a company and they're going to get hit with uh, uh, a huge tax bill, they'll go and buy. 10 alpacas um, and you know they're, they're still sort of hovering around at $20,000 each over there so they are they are you know still an expensive animal so if you're going to get in and buy 10 alpacas you can you can spend 100 grand to 200 grand quite easily. You know? I actually started in the US it wasn't me that cracked it my uncle is Kevin Galatly and uh, they outsourced him because he was a good shearer and uh, a farm over there with 1,500 alpacas wanted him to come over and do them and the US just exploded after that so we just started doing it. You know the fibre is definitely a commodity, um, you know we were saying there's no commercial market, that doesn't mean there's not a market, there is still a viable market in, in the home spinners and, and stuff like that um, so they will, will pay for nice fleeces. Um, then you know there is a, a fledgling um, meat market starting. Um, so, you know, that's pretty exciting for some of the big breeders. They're not like sheep, they're, they're more like a duck than a sheep, the water flows off of them. Even an inch of rain won't wet an alpaca to the skin, it just, just flows off of them, so, uh, which is great for me, I can keep shearing generally. So.